Module 19, Chi-Square Distribution and Tests of Significance based on Chi-Square Distribution, Section 2, Chi-Square Test of Goodness of Fit. So this test is a, a kind of a non-parametric goodness of fit test for model fitting. How good the observed data fits into the expected value or a model if you if you know if you have some expectations and how your observed data is fitting to that expectation then you have to do this goodness of fit test so this is a kind of a regression analysis not a correlation because you know uh, the model is also given it's not that both are actually calculated values no it is basically you have an explicit model and you are just seeing the fit of your data to that model so it's a kind of a regression for the categorical data of course so chi-square test of goodness of fit is, uh, you know, the, to test the fit of the observed data to the model. So or the expected data. So FO is there, FE is there. Only difference is that FE is calculated from a model, not from the FO. There is a difference between the two kinds of the chi-square test. Equation is same. Sigma FO minus FE squared upon FE. That is the same equation that we used in our earlier chi-square test as well. Where, you know, FE is the... the expected frequency while FO is the observed frequency. Only difference is that chi-square test of independence is that the FE is not computed from FO but from an explicit model. Let us see one example here. Out of the total 556 P plants, Grigor Mendel observed in his famous dihybrid cross study, four seed phenotypes in the frequencies given below. Round wrinkled and yellow and uh, white so you can see that the four kinds of uh, you know groups in it here and the values have been written and these numbers are basically the observed frequencies of the four different seed morphological patterns he he observed there so we we already have fo with us now we have to calculate the fe so how to calculate the fe because the Grigor Mental he already theorized that the expected frequency will fall in a special ratio that ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 you know so that is what the law of independent assortment says so uh, would you like to brush up your law of independent assortment please read some genetics book about it now this ratio is a model a theoretically expected proportion so let us plot those expected proportions in this table as well. So how can you actually calculate the FE, that is expected frequencies from this model? What is this model here? Just the ratio. 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Which is actually quite simple here. You know, the first one, the value is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So mo the, the model is nothing but ratio as per the Mendel's law of independent assortment 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So what the, the first step is to get is that we all have to do is to multiply each of the expected proportions with the total number of plants, you know, uh, that is 556. So note that the total uh, uh, expected frequencies add up to the total, that is 556. So uh, all we have to do is you have to actually multiply with this ratio, that is 9 out of how much? 16, right? 9 is to uh, 3 is to 3 is to 1, all add up to 16. So 9 divided by 16 multiplied by the overall FO sum is our first value. You know, then 3, then 3, then 1. So that way you can calculate the expected frequencies from ratio. So the ratio itself is not being put here. It's basically the ratio means that it's like odds. You know, you have to actually convert it divided by the total to get the, the proportion here. So if it's 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, that means that 9 divided by 16 multiplied by the overall total you, you are going to get the first value that is FO. Then comes uh, second value, third value you have to calculate for the rest of the uh, values as well, FOs as well. Now for this goodness of fit, what are the hypotheses? The null hypothesis here is that FO is equal to FE. That means that model fits the data very well. While alternative hypothesis is that FO is not equal to FE, that means that our model do not fit the data. So it is a two-tailed test, you see, it's equality simple on the, uh, in the null hypothesis. So now if you calculate this one systematically, the same thing, only difference is that how FO, FE is calculated. The so same way you calculated the rest of the things exactly like the one which I explained to you in, uh, in the last section. 
and then how much you are getting the, the, the test statistic or chi-square statistic is 0 0.47. So whenever you do the, the chi-square test, you can make a uh, uh, you know a rough guess. If the statistic is low, that means your p-value is very high. While chi-square test statistic is high, that means your p-value is going to be very low. So the it's basically uh, inversely proportional. But let us now look up this value, 0 0.47 in the chi-square table to find the chi-square critical value for which we should know the degrees of freedom. You know, and the significance level, which is uh, usually it's 0 0.05. For chi-square test of the goodness of fit, you know, our data is grouped into the row. There is no columns there. You know, unless the other other kind of test, the, the independence in in the independence, of course, we have rows as well as column. But in this case, there is only rows are there. The columns are not meaningful because the column is Fe is calculated from an explicit uh, uh, ratio or a model. So here in this case number of rows minus 1 is the degree of freedom there is no uh, columns in this case. So number of rows are only 4 in our example minus 1 is 3, 3 is the degree of freedom and then if you check that in your chi-square table the same table that we used earlier for uh, chi-square test of the independence you will see that at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 you are going to get 7.815 that is the, the critical chi-square value. Now the question is that which is higher? Table value is far higher you see than what we obtained. So p-value must be higher than 0 0.05. So as the critical value is 7.815 is far higher than our obtained chi-square test statistic which is 0 0.47. We can conclude that the p-value must be higher than 0 0.05 and the results are not significant. We fail to reject the null hypothesis of equal frequency. So that means that the data is not significantly deviating from the model. So what he, the mentor was expecting, the, the result is also quite similar to what his expectation is. A high p-value means that the data fits the model really well and is desirable in goodness of fit or regression analysis. So usually uh, people are go looking for a low p-value to say that uh, the null hypothesis is wrong. You know, so to reject the null hypothesis, the low p-value is desirable. But in this case, it, as it is a regression test, a high p-value is desirable because you, if you want to say that the model is fitting the data very well, perfectly, then you know, the p-value has to be very high. So if you move towards left in the same table, the chi-square table, we see that even at the significance level of 0.9, the critical chi-square 0.58 is still less than our obtained chi-square test. So therefore the p-value must be even higher than, greater than 0 0.9. So you see that this kind of uh, p-values are what uh, Gregor Mendel got in his uh, books and articles. So almost all of the Mendel's data are unrealistically high p-value that led Fisher uh, to doubt whether these values are real or not. You see, there is even, uh, uh, you know, the, there is even uh, uh, Fisher doubted even the uh, truthfulness of the Mendel's uh, data you know, the, is it fabricated or not. So that kind of controversy still existed uh, a century back. Well, Microsoft Excel have no support for chi-square test, but you can do that in semi-automatically in the, the way that I just explained to you. Or you can use a calculator, online calculator that can do the job pretty well. So you can go to that link and you can uh, perform the same calculation there. Or let us do the second example here, which is assignment number two. Does the sex ratio in Batinda significantly biased? So alternate uh, uh, HO that is a null hypothesis Fisherian sex ratio that means same you know uh, uh, males is equal to the female so that is what all number of males by female is one that is the null hypothesis. So total males is equal to total females while HA the alternative hypothesis is the biased sex ratio it is not equal to. So these are the data that we have in our mind and then we have to calculate this uh, Fe. Remember Fe is expected because there is a model, explicit model. The model is Fisherian sex ratio that is 50-50, you know, 1 is to 1. So with that you can calculate how much would be the expected frequency and then uh, you know you can perform the chi-square test uh, using that uh, same software which I ex just explained to you. And uh, 
you know you can see that the the p value of this is 0 0.034 so is the value is lesser than 0 0.05 yes so that means it is significantly uh, different the you know the the values are uh, this the the biased is favoring the biased sex ratio here so 0 0.034 is lesser than 0 0.05 but still it is not too less you should know that if you look at the p value you will know how much is it a borderline case i would say yes it is still borderline pretty close to the 0 0.05 so you can make uh, uh, you know the how good is the significance of your uh, uh, statement uh, or somebody else statement by just looking at the real p value as well it's just don't read this overemphasize on the star or the lesser than 0 0.05 but look at the exactly what how much the p value which they got the, the third example is the offspring of a self-pollination of a heterozygote garden pea. The null hypothesis is that the offspring will appear in the ratio of 3 out of 4 will be dominant, that is purple, while 1 out of 4 will be recessive uh, phenotype, that is white. So this is uh, also the, the very famous of the Mendel's law, this, uh, this uh, 3 is to 4 and 1 is to 4, that is 3. Uh, 3 is to 4 basically 3 is to 1 is the ratio or 3 by 4 and 1 by 4 so these are the models that comes from the Mendel's first law of the law of segregation you know so we can test it we are we, we already have FO we can calculate FV from this ratio and then we can calculate the chi-square and then compare with the table or we can perform that online as well and now example four again ass assignment number four is about uh, uh, the, the car sales of different car color and what are the expected. So in this case, in this example, expected frequencies are also given as part of the problem, you know, because the car seller has certain prior expectations that which color will be selling more. So his expectation is matching well with the data that he has in his hand. So how good is the fit so you can do the chi-square test for this as well so when there is only two categories like head and tail you know in the in the case of coin flipping or male or female in the case of biological gender so the best option is for the goodness of fit test is to go with binomial test so instead of going with the chi-square test binomial test is far better if you have just two and binomial test calculate the exact p value while the chi-square is kind of uh, you know uh, approximate p-value only the chi-square will calculate but binomial test calculate the exact p-value. So binomial test is explained in module 20. So in summary the chi-square test of goodness of fit is a non-parametric goodness of fit test for model fitting. How good the observed data fits into the expected value or the model. The test is a type of regression analysis for the categorical data. Two types of chi-square tests are used in contrasting situation and these should not be mixed up. For goodness of fit, both the data and the model are entered into the cell. So while for the Pearson's chi-square test of independence only data is entered, the expected values are calculated from the data itself, you know, but in, in the, model, the model fitting, yes, both you have to enter because the model is explicit. Thank you for watching.